During humanitarian crises, such as armed conflict, natural disasters and other crises, children are often the first victims and pay the highest price. The Primary Prevention Framework outlines three levels of prevention that can be implemented to prevent harm to children before it occurs. And in this video, we will briefly look at what these are. Primary prevention addresses the root causes among the population to reduce the likelihood of harmful outcomes. The target group is all children in a community or population rather than individuals. In primary prevention, sometimes a subgroup of children can be targeted as well. An example of this would be NGOs running family strengthening sessions for all families in a refugee camp. These sessions support positive interactions among family members and help to raise awareness around child maltreatment and healthy child development. Secondary prevention addresses a specific threat and or vulnerabilities of children identified as being at high risk of harm. Rather than targeting all children in a population or subpopulation, secondary prevention identifies children and families at high risk of harmful outcomes and addresses the root cause of harm for those specific children. An example of this would be local organisations identifying an adolescent girl with a form of disability in a single-headed household as potentially at risk of sexual violence or exploitation and referring her to life skills sessions for adolescents at risk of harm. Tertiary prevention targets individual children who have experienced harm and aims to reduce the longer-term impact of harm and reduce the chances of recurring harm. An example of tertiary prevention would be local organisations in a refugee camp identifying and then assisting a displaced child who is separated from family and is being cared for by an elderly woman. This assistance could include the child receiving case management support, including psychosocial support and referral to other necessary services, the adult receiving livelihood support, and the care arrangement being formalised as appropriate to the situation of the separated child and the adult. To find out more about prevention within child protection in humanitarian action, please visit the Alliance for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action website.